Hi there students! In the first part of this video, we will learn to order objects. Are you ready? Let's begin! First, let's learn to order objects by length. Here, we have three caterpillars. We can put them in order from shortest to longest, just like this. This is the shortest one. Put it first. This one is medium length. Put it second. This is the longest one. Put it last. We can also put them in order from longest to shortest just like this. This is the longest one. Put it first. This one is medium length. Put it second. This is the shortest one. Put it last. Now, can you help me put these three fish in order from shortest to longest? Which fish is the shortest? Did you say this one? Great! Put it first. Which fish is medium length? Did you say this one? Very good! Put it second. Which fish is the longest? Did you say this one? Brilliant! Put it last. Can you help me put these fish in order from longest to shortest? Which fish is the longest? This fish, right? Put it first. Which fish is medium length? This one, right? Put it second. Which fish is the shortest? Did you choose this one? Excellent! Put it last. Next, let's learn to order objects by height. Here, we have three wall meters. We can put them in order from shortest to tallest like this. This is the shortest one. Put it first. This one is medium height. Put it second. This is the tallest one. Put it last. We can also put these wall meters in order from tallest to shortest like this. This is the tallest one. Put it first. This one is medium height. Put it second. This is the shortest one. Put it last. Now, can you help me put these three giraffes in order from shortest to tallest? Which one is the shortest? Did you say this one? Great! Put it first. Which one is medium height? Did you say this one? Well done! Put it second. Which one is the tallest? Did you choose this one? Brilliant! Put it last. Can you help me put these giraffes in order 
from tallest to shortest. Which one is the tallest? This one, right? Put it first. Which one is medium height? Did you choose this one? Very good! Put it second. Which one is the shortest? Did you choose this one? Excellent! Put it last. Now, in the next part, we will learn how to measure objects. First, let's learn to measure length. Here, we have a toy train. We can measure the length of the train by using paper clips. Remember to use paper clips of the same size. Don't use paper clips of different sizes. Before measuring, you need to decide the start and the end of the train. You can use a ruler to draw straight lines like this to mark the start and the end. Then draw a straight line from the start to the end to decide the length of the train. Now, are you ready to measure? From the start, put paper clips one after another. Remember that the paper clips should touch each other at the ends, not overlap each other or be spread out like this. Also, remember to put paper clips in a straight line like this, not like this. If you follow the red line, you will always put them in a straight line. Now, let's count how many paper clips long the train is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Great! It's nine paper clips long. Now that you know how to measure length, you can practice measuring lengths of objects around you, like toys, books, pencils, spoons, using paper clips. Now, can you tell me how many paper clips long is this hot dog sandwich? Did you say it's six paper clips long? You're brilliant! How many paper clips long is this sheep? Brilliant! It's seven paper clips long. Do you know we can use dimes to measure length? Here, dimes are used to measure the length of the dog. Can you tell me how many dimes long is this dog? Did you say it's five dimes long? You're great! You know, you can also use blocks to measure length. Here, blocks are used to measure the length of the hippo. Can you tell me how many blocks long is this hippo? Good job! It's eight blocks long. Next, 
Let's learn to measure height. Here, we have a stuffed lion. We can measure the length of this lion by using buttons. Remember to use buttons of the same size. Don't use buttons of different sizes. Before measuring, you need to decide the bottom and the top of the lion. You can use a ruler to draw straight lines like this to mark the bottom and the top. Then draw a straight line from the bottom to the top to decide the height of the lion. Now, are you ready to measure? From the bottom, put buttons one after another. Remember that the buttons should touch each other at the ends, not overlap each other or be spread out like this. Remember to put buttons in a straight line like this, not like this. If you follow the red line, you will always put the buttons in a straight line. Now, let's count how many buttons tall the lion is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great! It's ten buttons tall. Now that you know how to measure height, you can practice measuring heights of objects around you, like toys, books, flowers, using buttons. Now, can you tell me how many buttons tall is this tiger? Did you say it's five buttons tall? You're brilliant! How many buttons tall is this penguin? Brilliant! It's three buttons tall. Do you know we can use dimes to measure height? Here, dimes are used to measure the height of the Christmas tree. Can you tell me how many dimes tall is this tree? Did you say it's nine dimes tall? You are great! You know, you can also use blocks to measure height. Here, we use blocks to measure the height of the fox. How many blocks tall is this fox? Very good! It's four blocks tall. Now, in the next part, we will learn to solve math word problems. First, let's learn to solve some addition word problems. Question 1 On Monday, Miss Hannah sold three ice cream cones and five cups of ice cream. How many ice creams did Miss Hannah sell all together on Monday? Here, you can draw three ice cream cones and five cups of ice cream, which Miss Hannah sold on Monday. 
To find the total number of ice creams Miss Hannah sold on Monday, just add three and five. To find the sum, just count all the ice creams together. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ice creams. So we answer. Miss Hannah sold eight ice creams all together on Monday. Question two. Henry has four toys, including a train, a teddy bear, a xylophone, and a rocket ship. Albert has two toys, including a helicopter and a drum. How many toys do Henry and Albert have in total? To work out this problem, you can draw a train, a teddy bear, a xylophone, and a rocket ship to show the number of toys Henry has. Then draw a helicopter and a drum to show the number of toys Albert has. Here, to find the total number of toys. Henry and Albert have. Just add four and two. To find the sum, just count all the toys together. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six toys. So we answer Henry and Albert have six toys in total. When solving word problems, notice the keywords all together, in total, both and combined. These words tell you to use addition. Question 3. Emily has six cupcakes. Laura has some cupcakes. They have ten cupcakes all together. How many cupcakes does Laura have? Here, you can draw six cupcakes that Emily has, then draw a box to show the unknown number of cupcakes Laura has. Now, you can write 6 plus something equals 10. If you recall the addition facts, you can quickly find 6 plus 4 equals 10. If you don't remember the addition facts, then you can draw more cupcakes and count on until you get 10. Then count the number of cupcakes you've just drawn to find the answer. Here, we've just drawn four more cupcakes. Do you notice in both ways we found the same answer, which is four cupcakes, right? So we can answer Laura has four cupcakes. Question 3 is one type of word problem where the sum is known and we have to find a missing number. You can use a question mark or a box for the missing number. To find the missing number, the ideal way is to recall the addition facts. Now, let's learn to solve some subtraction word problems. Question 4 
Mummy bought seven donuts for Emma. Emma ate four of them. How many donuts does Emma have left? To solve this problem, you can draw seven donuts that Mummy bought for Emma. Then you can cross out four donuts to show the number of donuts Emma ate. To find the number of donuts Emma has left, just subtract four from seven. To find the difference, just count the number of donuts that have not been crossed out. Here we have one, two, three donuts left. So we answer Emma has three donuts left. Question 5 Nine sea creatures, including a fish, a turtle, a starfish, a dolphin, an octopus, a crab, a seahorse, a whale and a jellyfish are playing in an aquarium tank. Then three of them, including the seahorse, the whale and the jellyfish, swim away. How many sea creatures are still playing? Here, you can draw a fish, a turtle, a starfish, a dolphin, an octopus, a crab, a seahorse, a whale and a jellyfish that are playing in the aquarium tank. You can cross out the seahorse, the whale and the jellyfish to show those swim away. To find the number of sea creatures that are still playing, just subtract 3 from 9. To find the difference, just count the number of those that have not been crossed out. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sea creatures. We can answer six sea creatures are still playing. Question six. Sophie bought nine strawberries and oranges. Six of them are strawberries. How many oranges did Sophie buy? Let's solve this word problem together. Sophie bought nine strawberries and oranges. Six of them are strawberries, the rest are oranges. We can use a number bond to model the problem this way. To find the number of oranges, this means to find this unknown part of the number bond. We subtract the other part from the whole. Here, we subtract 6 from 9 and we get 3. We answer, Sophie bought 3 oranges. Sometimes you can use a number bond to model a word problem. If you have to find a part, just subtract the other part from the whole. Now, let's learn to solve comparison word problems. Question 7 Alice has five lollipops. Emily has two lollipops more than Alice. How many lollipops does Emily have? Let 
let's solve the problem together. Alice has five lollipops. Emily has two lollipops more than Alice. This means Emily has five lollipops and two more. We add five and two to find the number of lollipops Emily has. Here, five plus two equals seven. We answer Emily has seven lollipops. Do you notice that we use addition to find more than? Question 8 Helen has 9 balloons Katie has 2 balloons fewer than Helen How many balloons does Katie have? Let's work out this problem together Helen has 9 balloons Katie has two balloons fewer than Helen. This means Katie has the number of balloons that is two fewer than nine. So we subtract two from nine to find the number of balloons Katie has. Here, nine minus two equals seven. We answer, Katie has seven balloons. Do you notice that we use subtraction to find fewer than? Question 9 There are eight butterflies and five ladybugs in the garden. How many more butterflies than ladybugs are there? To solve this problem, you can draw 8 butterflies, then 5 ladybugs. Do you see there are more butterflies than ladybugs? We subtract 5 from 8 to find the number of more butterflies than ladybugs. Here, 8 minus 5 equals 3. We answer, there are three more butterflies than ladybugs. Do you notice, in question 9, to find how many more, we find the difference between the two numbers. Question 10 Hannah has 10 ice creams. Kelly has 7 ice creams. How many fewer ice creams does Kelly have than Hannah? To solve this problem, you can draw 10 ice creams that Hannah has. Then, draw 7 ice creams that Kelly has. Do you see? Kelly has fewer ice creams than Hannah. This is the number of fewer ice creams Kelly has than Hannah. We subtract 7 from 10 to find the number of fewer ice creams Kelly has than Hannah. Here, 10 minus 7 equals 3. We answer Kelly has three fewer ice creams than Hannah. Do you notice in question 10, to find how many fewer, we also find the difference between the two numbers. Next, let's learn to solve word problems which involve the addition of three numbers. Question 11 Hannah went to a safari park and saw 
three tigers, five pandas, and two giraffes. How many animals did Hannah see at the safari park in total? Let's solve the problem together. Hannah saw three tigers, five pandas, and two giraffes. To find the total number of animals Hannah saw, just add these numbers together. Here, we add 3 and 5 and 2. We get 10. So we answer, Hannah saw 10 animals at the safari park in total. Question 12. Albert has two cats, four dogs and one bird. How many pets does Albert have in total? Can you work out the answer by yourself? You can pause this video to find the answer before continuing. Let's check if you've got the correct answer. Albert has two cats, four dogs and one bird. To find the total number of pets Albert has, just add these numbers together. Here. We add 2 and 4 and 1. We get 7. So we answer, Albert has 7 pets in total. Lastly, I will teach you to solve two-step word problems. Question 13. Mummy gave Sophie five strawberries. Daddy gave her three strawberries. Sophie ate six of them. How many strawberries did Sophie have left? If you want to work out the answer by yourself, just pause this video to do it before continuing. Let's check if you've got the correct answer. In this problem, you first have to find the total number of strawberries that Mummy and Daddy gave Sophie. Because Mummy gave Sophie five strawberries, Daddy gave her three strawberries. So adding five and three you can find the total number of strawberries that Mummy and Daddy gave Sophie. Here, 5 plus 3 equals 8 strawberries. Because Sophie ate 6 of them, we have to subtract 6 from the total number of strawberries to find how many strawberries Sophie had left. Here, subtracting 6 from 8, we get 2 strawberries. So we answer, Sophie has 2 strawberries left. Great! You were finished. Bye for now and see you soon in the next lesson.